example one, just pause the video, okay? Um, have a go, come back when you're ready. All right, so you read all this, all right? The value is a continuous variable, a time t years, the rate of decrease of v is proportional to v cubed. All right, now I can just about fit question eight in here because it's so short, remember? The rate of decrease of v, the rate of, so that's, that's the rate of change of v, right, is directly proportional to v cubed. And because it's decreasing, okay, I know it's gonna be, there's gonna be a negative relationship here, okay? Because this is a rate of decrease, not a rate of, not a rate of increase. So part B now, and right then I just wrote down dv by dt equals negative kv cubed, I believe. Yes, right. And part B is the usual thing, all right? They've got an expression that doesn't contain any derivatives. So I'm gonna have to integrate, do my usual thing. All right, so as always, this v cubed needs to come over to the left-hand side. So I could divide by v cubed, which is the same as writing it as one over v cubed, all right? dv by dt, and that's gonna be equal to negative k. Now, now I'm gonna integrate now both sides with respect to t, and you get this, remember now, these dt's all cancel. So you just left with the integral of one over v cubed dv is the integral of negative k dt. Before I integrate, then you write v to one over v cubed is v to the minus three. And again, integral of negative k dt. Now I'll do my integration. Remember you add one to the power and divide by the new power, minus two on the bottom there, to negative kt plus one big constant c. And again, I will rewrite this now, all right? I'll drop the v to the minus two down to the bottom, bring the minus to the front. So it's gonna end up looking like this. These two left-hand sides are the same thing, okay? We'll make it easy to work with. Because I am told now, look, I right, see in the, in the expression, they have only, well, see, it doesn't look, doesn't look like mine at all yet, does it? Though you're always told, on you, certain things to help you out. See, the initial value of the car is A pounds. But initially, remember that means at the very start of this process, so initially, T is zero, okay? And they tell you that V is A. All right, so if I call this equation one, and perhaps come up here just to make it look a bit, a bit neater and tidier, okay? I know that t equals naught and v equals a. In equation one, I get negative one over two a squared equals minus k times zero plus c, okay? Well, negative one over two a squared here. This here is zero. So you get c is negative one over two a squared. Put that into equation one now. You get negative one over two v squared is minus kt minus one over two a squared. And what I'll do, I'm gonna multiply the entire equation through by negative one to make everything positive. Okay, so I'm gonna get one over two v squared is positive kt plus one over two a squared. Doesn't look much like the expression so far, you notice, for example, in the v squared is on top of there. It's not like, you know, it's, it's, it's here, look, it's, it's on top of a, a so-called fraction, mine's on the bottom. For that to happen, all right, I want to invert the entire expression, but that can only be done if both sides are single fractions. This left-hand side is a single fraction. This one isn't, all right? So maybe a, I'll make a common denominator here, okay? Which will have to be 2a squared. Luckily for us, isn't it? Okay, this right-hand fraction won't have to change. And you can see this this one has been times by 2a squared. That means on top now, I'm gonna have to write down kt times 2a squared. And now I can do this, can't I? Well, I can do one over two v squared. I combine the fraction into one by adding the numerators. And I'll tidy up this thing here. I will write this as 2a squared kt plus one. 
Well, and now I'm able to uh, invert now the fractions on both sides. Okay, so I get two v squared is two a squared over two a squared kt plus one. So I have to come up here now. This one, this the algebra is getting a bit sticky here now. If I carry on now in the expression, they've obviously divided by two. So if you divide by two, all right, then you're going to get v squared. But if you divide a fraction by two, remember, you only divide the numerator by two. All right, you only divide the numerator by two. Um, so in this case, I will get just a squared on the top over two a squared kt plus one. Again, it doesn't look much like this, all right, but it will soon do. See, because on the bottom, they've just got this single bt term here, and I've got two a squared kt. What they've done is a common trick, all right? K is a constant and A is a constant, all right? So basically, um, and because A is just a numerical value, all right? So this whole thing here is also a constant. So they just renamed this whole constant with a, they've renamed it something different. They have just called two A squared KT. They called it B or A, they've called it B. BT plus one, okay? You can say they have renamed the block 2a squared k as b. All right, and with that, we're done. So that is as required. See that the algebra is very sticky here, yeah, very sticky. Um, the integration to e, the algebra is sticky. All right, but I got there in the end. Uh, let me call that equation two. So I'll probably need it again now, surely. I will look for part c. Okay, let me go onto a blank page a minute and write the one we just wrote down. What do we have? V squared equals, was it A squared over, was it BT plus one? Well, I've made a mistake. Yeah, BT plus one. Yep, this is equation two. But what are we told? When T is two, the value of the car has formed a half of its initial value. Remember, the initial value was A. So a half of that is going to be a over two or half a, all right? Which everyone's easy to write down. Let me see. So I know now that was it t equals two, and the value was, let me write this a over two just temporarily, I think. Yeah, t was two, all right? And I'll put these now into equation two, all right? So I'm going to get a over two, sorry, all squared is a squared over b times t is b times two. You're gonna get two b plus one here. I mean, if you square a fraction, square the numerator and square the denominator, and you get this. This is quite nice now, I suppose, isn't it? Because perhaps I can use a bit of a bit of a a trickier maybe, is it? Rather than making a common denominator and messing about. All right, I will bring this two b plus one up to here. All right by times and by it. So you're going to get 2b plus 1a squared. I'll also bring this 4 up here by times and by it. So it's going to go away. Then you're going to get 4a squared. And the cool thing is now that a squared can't be 0. So I can divide legitimately by a squared to cancel it. So oh shit, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even need the brackets anymore because there's nothing attached to this bracket anymore. It's gone, which is nice. So I'm going to get 2b add 1 equals 4. And if you take off the 1, and then divide by two, then you get B is 1.5, right? Or three over two, up to you, whichever one you'd rather use. Put that back in equation two, quickly doing we don't like unknown constants. We get V squared is A squared over 1.5 T plus one. And what's the last part of this very long question? Find the value of T when the value of the car would have gone to a quarter of its initial value. That means A has gone to a quarter of A, or A over four. Okay, so if I put now, um, let me call this your equation three. So now if A, sorry, if the value of V, so the value now, okay, is a quarter of the initial value. Put that in equation three, and you get A over four squared equals A squared over 1.5 T 
plus one, again, got to square the fraction, you get this. Again, use my same trick, I suppose. All right, I'm gonna add again 1.5t plus one a squared equals 16 a squared. Again, the a squares will cancel out because they're non non zero. So you get 1.5t plus one equals 16. That means that t is gonna be basically 15 over 1.5, which is 10. And I can't remember if t was in years or weeks or t is in years. So that's that very long example done. Okay, here's the, here's the main task solutions. First question here, okay? Um, so I pause it by you, have a go, come back when you're ready. Okay, so the first one, it says, write down a differential equation that's satisfied by P. Well, I'll just say then, um, the value of the component at time T is P. The rate of decrease of P is proportional to P cubed. Remember the rate of decrease of p is a rate of change so that's dp by dt over time remember it's directly proportional to p cubed remember that, okay it's a decrease so this is going to be negative here okay why right, it's going to be a negative proportionality because it's a rate of decrease <clears throat> okay done Right, so I may need to go on to the next slide, you know, I think I will do actually I'm write down question A again. I had dp by dt. What did I have? Negative kp cubed. Right. And then part B now. So again, usual thing with this one, isn't it? Okay, you gotta do my integration to, to get rid of the rid of the derivatives. So first things first, remember, okay, I'll get the p cubed over the other side by dividing by it. Same as saying one over p cubed there, dp by dt is negative k into both sides with respect to t. Like this. Remember these will go away. And so you're just left with the integral of one over p cubed dp is the integral of negative k dt remember now okay that the uh, one over p cubed is basically in the, it's basically the same as p to the power of minus three dp is the integral of negative k dt do your integration so add one to the power and divide by the new power okay and then we know that negative k will go back up to negative kt but don't forget your constant of Proportional, uh, uh, sorry, your constant of integration, um, capital C. Right, so you've got to try and show this now, right? So, what I notice is that, um, you know, there's, there's only one constant in the expression dA. I've got two of mine at the moment, the K and the C. All right, so let me try and make this a bit easier to read, right? I think if I write this left hand side in a slightly better looking form this will be negative one over two p squared okay i can bring the minus to the front of the expression and drop the p to the minus two back down so it'd be it'd be one over p squared combine them together and i'm good to go now hopefully there's some conditions i can use yeah t is naught and p is 20 it says there all right so I can say that uh, t is naught and p is 20 in equation one. Let me come into a second column. So put it in and I get negative one over two times 20 squared equals, well, minus k times zero plus c. Now negative one over this here, I think it's gonna be negative one over 800. Obviously, negative k times the zero is zero, so c is actually negative one over eight hundred. Put that back into equation one, and you get that uh, negative one over two p squared equals negative k t minus one over eight hundred. 
And what else have they done there to compare it? All right, so they basically, they've called, they, they got rid of all the minus signs for a start. See, these are all negative signs. So if I, if I multiply through by negative one to make them more positive, that's what they asked for. One over two P squared equals KT plus one over 800. And I think they've just renamed their constant K. They called it A. All right. So it'll be, uh, actually, no, I can provide to that, actually, provide to that. I know it's also, there's a 400 year, all right, different than mine. And there's, see, mine is, I've got two P squared on mine. They've just got P squared. So they must have multiplied through this equation by two, I think, to clear this two here, okay? Yeah, that'll give you one of a P, one of a P squared is two KT, and one over 800 times two, is one over 400. You can check on the calculator. Uh, I want to look. They have obviously put the one over 400 at the front of the expression. See? And then they have renamed this 2K. Obviously, K is a constant, so 2K will be a constant. So they just called this 2K A. So A equals 2K as required. Well, I think the algebra here is even is probably is more tricky than the actual um, integration, but that is what I needed. Okay, so I've got that. Three, right? Given that the value of the component when t is one is ten pounds, find the time when the value is five. Right. So I think we've gone to one more blank slide actually, and I added this is question C. I had one over p squared equals one over four hundred. Was it plus uh, plus a t? Okay, let me call this equation two now. It's all looking better. All right, so t is one and p is so t is one and p is ten. Okay, so t equals one and p equals ten in equation two gives me one over ten squared is one over four hundred plus a times one, or well, one over a hundred is one over 400 plus a. So I always just subtract one over 400, all right, to get the value of a. So one over 100, take away one over 400, gives me three over 400. All right, so again, put that back into equation two again now to, to make the equation even nicer to work with. One over p squared is one over 400 plus a times t. So I'll write that as three four hundredths times t like this. And I'll call that equation three. And what else do I need to, I need to work out now? Find the time when the value is five. So find t when p is five. Okay, well easy now, isn't it? Because p is five in equation three gives me one over Five squared is one over four hundred plus three over four hundred times t. Clean things up. One over twenty-five is one over four hundred plus three four hundredths t. I will take off one over four hundred and turn the whole thing around, so I get three four hundredths t and one over twenty-five take away one over 400 is three over 80. And now your call, you either times by 400 and divide by three, or you can simply just divide this into, by the entire fraction, can't you? So I will divide by the whole fraction, yeah? It does the same job, but only a bit quicker. So T is gonna be three over 80 divided by three over 400. So divide by three, divided by three over 400 gives me five. And so what was that then? It was uh, five what then, or five years, five years. Job done with that one. Okay, main task question two then. Pause it, have a go, come back when you're ready. Okay, welcome back. So the usual thing here, okay. The volume is V times T, the rate of decrease of V, 
So that's going to be dv by dt is directly proportional to v cubed because it's a decrease, put a minus in front. Okay, could not be easier. Job done. Right then, part B. Let me just write that uh, down again. So dv by dt is negative k v cubed. Okay. Unusual then. Part B, my goal in it is to get v is to get v on its own by getting rid of the derivative. So my usual trick now. I will write this as neg as one over v cubed dv by dt equals negative k. I might take a shortcut here now. Okay, we know then we were going to integrate both sides with respect to t, and so after the cancellation, we are going to get this. All right, like this. We, we know the dt is going to cancel out on the left hand side. Now this is v to the minus three again, db. This is the integral of negative k dt. Sorry, I've got my uh, integral sign there. My fault. Now if we integrate, I'm going to add one to the power and divide by the new power. Negative kt plus one big constant. Okay, and it'd be helpful now when it to look at my what's my what's my ultimate goal here? To get a v squared on its own. Right, okay. Uh well, all right, let me let me just do what I did before then. Let me write this left hand side as negative one over two v squared equals negative kt add c. Okay, and I hope I got there some constants I can work around. Let me see. Let me call this equation one. All right, so v is 60 and t is naught. Okay, so v equals 60 and t equals naught in equation one means that negative one over two times 60 squared. Again, it's going to be equal to c because k times naught is just naught. Okay, so that means that c is negative one over 7,200 I got you. I'll put that now back in equation one. Put it back in equation one and you get that uh, negative one over two v squared equals negative k t take away one over 7,200. I will times by negative one, I think, just to get rid of all the negative signs. One over two v squared equals k t plus one over 7,200. And then what we got them, uh, right? So they got the v squared on top here. So I think what I better do, I think, well, first things first, let me times by two again, all right? To get one over v squared equals two k t plus one over 3,600. And again, use the same trick. I'm gonna rename this two k. I think they've used little a, you see? So I'm gonna say one over v squared is gonna be a t plus one over 3,600. This is where a equals two k. Now look at their answer. They've got v squared um, on top so i got to find a way now to basically invert this entire equation. For that to happen, both sides need to be fractions. Okay, so a little trick I'll use here. I'll pull it over one, all right? If you find a common denominator for these two, all right? Well, you know, I don't really want to do it the long way, but if I have to, I will, I suppose. See these two on the left, on the left hand, on the right hand side, I'll put them both over 3,600, okay? I'll stay as one there. Okay, and this one here, all right, um, this one would be um, 3,680. See, I multiply the bottom by 3,600 here, and then I can combine the two fractions on the right hand side. You're going to get 3,680 plus 1 over 3,600. All right, and then now look, I can invert the entire equation. Turn everything upside down. You're going to get v squared over 1 is 3680 plus 1 over, oh, sorry, hang on, go back, Thompson, back. Turn, I'm going to turn the whole thing upside down, the right hand side upside down as well. All right, so 3600 over 3600 
PT plus one. Obviously, the one on the bottom of the left-hand side is useless. And what I have noticed, actually, maybe I should have left it till the end. See, they haven't, they've got just, just plain old AT here. So maybe what I'll do, if I run back to my, they, they must have renamed this new constant here, lowercase a. So what I might do, if I can get away with it, maybe not, though, maybe not. Perhaps I'll try and get, perhaps I'll get all the A's here. Yeah, I will do. And perhaps I, let me do it in blue to make it standard. Perhaps I could have called this a, oh, a bit cheeky, isn't it? BT. All right. Where B was 2K plus 1. So it would be, it was just 2K. All right. And now look, I can legitimately, all right, rename this here, can they, because 3600 B is going to be another constant. I call that whole constant A T plus one. And this time, just say that A is 3600 B. And that's what they wanted. That's required. Yeah, I think some people may have left this 2K all the way through their answer and replaced it at the end. It's just my habit. If ever I can simplify a big constant with a smaller one, I tend to do it. Okay, so yeah, bear that in mind, a cautionary tale there for that one. But we got there in the end. And then part C now, okay. Right, parts. Let me let me write down, let me call it, let me call this equation two here. And write down equation two before I forget what I said. Did I say V squared was 3600 over A T plus one? And this was equation two, all right. So now if I go back to the equation now, so T is two and V is 50. All right, so T equals two and V equals 50. In equation two, gives me 50 squared is 3,600 over A times two, which is 2A plus one. In the right left hand side, 2,500 equals 3,600 over 2A add one. Now, obviously, I want to find the value of this constant A, don't I? So, again, it's up to you here, really. I might be a bit cheeky. I suppose I maybe you could. I suppose me, maybe both of a common denominator, maybe. Well, why not, is it? Why not? All right, I'll make my, co my common denominator has to be 2a add 1, All right, which means luckily for me, the right hand side can stay the same. Obviously, I've multiplied the bottom number here by 2a add 1. That means I need to multiply the top by 2a add 1 as well. And remember, then you can omit the denominators because they're the same. And then I'll expand these brackets. So you're going to get 5,000. A plus 2,500 equals 3,600. So I'll take off the 2,500. You're going to get 5,000. A equals um, 1,100. And so then divide by the 5,000. You're going to get A is 11,000 over. 5,000, sorry. So 11, so 1100 over 5,000 is 11 over 50 or 0 0.22. So A is 0 0.22. So if you put that then into equation two, you get B squared is 3,600 over 0 0.22 T plus one. And finally, DME. Find the value of T when V is 27 meter cubed. Okay, so now if if V is 27 meter cubes, put that in equation two, and you get 27 squared is 3,600 over 0 0.22 T plus one. Right, 729. This is going to be on the right on the left hand side. 36, 0, 0, 0, 0. There's no way now, okay? I'm going to find another common denominator here. I'm going to be a bit lazy, all right? Um, I am going to just picture this. I'm See, at the moment, I'm dividing by this. I will just bring this up to the left-hand side, all right, by times and by it. But at the same time, I'm going to do 3,000. I'm also going to divide by the 729 to get rid of it, all right? Otherwise, we'll be here all day with these common denominators. 
you know, three thousand. Will, will this be a nice number on the left hand side, on the right hand side? I doubt it. No, it's horrible. All right, I got. Uh, I'll I'll leave it like that. And again, to speed things up now, to find t, I'm going to take away the one first of all, and then divide by 0 0.22. So you're going to get t is going to be 3,600 over 729 minus one divided by 0 0.22. Okay, so I'll take off one and divide by 0 0.22, and I get a uh, a nasty answer. It says one dp. So looking at this, I got 17.9. And what's the units of in hours? 1 dp. And that question is done. Question three on the main task then. Pause it, have a go, come back when you're ready. Okay, welcome back. Then this question eight again is very similar in it. The rate of decrease of V, so I know it's going to be negative. Is directly proportional this time it's to v squared done okay we've got part and write the one it's written down dv by dt is negative k v squared right so usual thing all right um first i'll just do a one over v squared this time dv by dt is negative k we'll do our integration with our shortcut as usual all right, I get one over v squared, the integral of one over v squared dv is the integral of negative k dt. Remember, v squared is v to the power of negative 2. So add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, minus kt add c. And again, I'll probably drop this downstairs as negative 1 over v is negative kt at c to make it a bit easier to work with and i will check now what's going on so yeah they're giving us some values again to try and get rid of some of these constants all right in fact we are told v is twelve thousand and t is naught so v is twelve thousand and t is naught in equation one gives me negative one over twelve thousand Again, negative k times naught is just naught, so c is negative 1 over 12,000. Put in equation 1, tell them that negative 1 over v is negative kt, take away negative 1, sorry, take away 1 over 12,000. And again, that usual trick, I will multiply everything by negative 1 to make it look a bit better, and you're going to get negative, you're going to get 1 over v, sorry, is positive kt plus 1 over. 12,000, and which format have they got this in? Uh, a very simple format here. All right, so I use my same trick now, all right, but even maybe actually a bit of a, a bit of a cheaper trick, I suppose, all right, rather than making a common denominator on the right-hand side. Um, I'm gonna picture it in my head, okay, because I know they're both gonna be over 12,000, and I know that I'll be multiplying the KT, all right, by 12,000. All right, if you have to do it a long way, then that's fine. That's what I'm going to get. Now I can invert the fraction. All right, so I'm going to get 12,000 over 12,000 kt plus 1. And I expect they've replaced the 12,000 k of they with another, they have with another constant. All right, so they have called that other constant a. at plus 1. All right, in this case, they've said that a is 12,000 k. They're both constant, so may as well make it look a bit neater. That's what they wanted. As required. Okay. And then call that equation two. I've got my next slide. I know what's coming see on this one now, so I know that I, what did I have. I had V was 12,000 over what was it, 80 plus 1? 80 plus 1. And this is equation two here. So question C now. Usual thing. The value of the car at the end of two years so t equals two and v is nine thousand okay so t is two and v is nine thousand put in equation two you get nine thousand is twelve thousand over two a plus one again use my trick here i'll bring the two plus one at the top 
and divide by 9,000 as well. So that means that A is going to be 12,000 over 9,000 minus 1 divided by 2. And that gives me the A, well, a C, so 12,000 over 9,000 is not nice. Take away 1 and divide by 2. All right, well, A is actually 1 over 6. All right, I won't put it to decimal because our decimal is horrible. So put it in equation 2. And you get that V is going to be 1200, sorry, 12,000 all over 16T plus 1. And I will call that equation 3 because, again, I know what's coming. It says now find the value of the car at the end of four years. So T equals 4 now. All right, so T equals 4 in equation 3. Gives me that V is going to be 12,000 over one sixth times four plus one and simply work it out. So 12,000 over one sixth times four plus one gives me 7,200. I think it was in pounds, it is in pounds. And that main task done. Next, all the questions follow a similar pattern. I think the hardest part is the algebra to get the equation in the required form you want. Okay, then the checking question. Let's pause this and then come back when you're ready. Okay, welcome back. Same sort of thing again, all right? Um, so the depth is x, the time is t. So the rate of change of x, decrease in this case, is directly proportional to root x. So that means that this time dx by dt, okay, is negative. So it's going to be negative k root x this time. Job done, all right? So I'm going to put down part a, I add dx by dt is negative k root x. All right, again, part the usual thing, all right? Get rid of the derivatives and then worry about the rest later. So by rearrangement, I'm going to get this as 1 over root x dx by dt is minus k. I got to use my shortcut now, okay? Both sides with respect t. We know what's going to happen. We're going to get this. All right. Again, remember, 1 over root x. Remember, root x is x to the power of a half. So this is going to be the equal of x to the negative 1 half power. Okay, because it's 1 over a power. Okay, integration now. Remember, add 1 to the power. And divide by the new power. Negative kt add c. If you're dividing by a half, it's the same as multiplying by 2. And obviously, x to the half is best written as root x. So, so far, you get this is my initial equation. We call it equation 1. We're told now that t is 0 and the depth, which is x, is 9. Okay, so t equals 0 and x equals 9 in equation 1 means that 2 root 9. Is going to be zero as always plus c so just c and obviously two root nine root nine is three two times three is six so c equals six okay and if you put that then in equation one you get that two root x is negative kt plus six all right and yeah I'd see for us like they've just taken the equation and rearranged it to get to get kt on its own so they've brought the kt over to the left the left hand side to make it positive and they have got the six there and they've taken off the two root x okay because they've done the opposite to change the signs of the whole thing and turned it around is that what they wanted that is it that was easy uh, as required no props and then oh sorry question c then all right let me call this equation two Question C says, given the depth of water, so x equals 4 when t equals 20. All right, so x equals 4, t equals 20, put it into equation 2, and that gives me that I'm going to get k times 20. So that's 20k equals 6 minus 2 root 2. So I get 20k, obviously 2 times 
sorry, two, two, not, not, not two times root two, two times root four, my bad. Sorry, x is four. Sorry about that. I thought that would be a bit weird then. All right. I was thinking ahead, see, because root four is two. So in the end, this left and right hand side evaluates are just two divided by 20. And you end up getting that k is one tenth or 0 0.1. So put that in equation two. And you get that uh, one tenth t equals six minus two root x. And we call that equation three. Look back then, find the time taken for the tank to empty. And when the tank is empty, remember, it means it's got zero depth. So that means that I'm looking for when x equals zero. Okay, so I need x equals zero. So put that into equation three, and you get one tenth t is six minus two root zero. And obviously, root zero is zero. So this term here it goes away. So one tenth t equals sixty, and then divide by one tenth or times by ten, whatever you want to do. Sorry, just six there. I think let me get rid of that. Yeah, I was trying to think. I'm trying to get ahead of the game there. Yeah, let me, let me go for it in blue to make double sure we're all clear. This right hand side is six, take away naught, okay, which is just six. Then you times by 10, all right, and you get that t equals 60 minutes. Did it say anything else? Yeah, 60 minutes or one hour, right? But I think, I think the time was specified, wasn't it? In minutes, it was. So I will leave my answer in minutes as well.